ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਦਾ ਜਵਾਬ ਫਤਿਹ ਦੇਣਾ ਜੀ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਸਾਧ ਸੰਗਤ ਜੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਬੜਾ ਵੀ ਆਨਰ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਚੈਂਸ ਚੈਂਗ ਡੀਐਸ ਟੂ ਕਮ ਇਨ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਟੂ ਅਸ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਐਟ ਦਾ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਟੁਡੇ ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਦੇ ਆਕੋ ਨੂੰ ਡੂ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਫੋਰ ਸੈਨੇਟ ਫੋਰ ਦਾ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਸ਼ੀਲ ਸਪੀਕ ਵਿਦ ਅਸ ਫੋਰ ਅ ਫਿਊ ਮਿੰਟਸ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਨਿਊ ਇੰਗਲੈਂਡ ਸਿਕਸ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਸਰਕਲ ਦੇ ਵਾਲੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਚੈਂਗ ਦੀ ਐਸ ਦੇ ਤਤ ਦੋਲੋਂ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਮਾਤਾ ਜੀ ਸਮਾਜ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਅਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਜੀ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਲਟੀਨੋ ਐਸਟਰੋਨਾਟ ਸੀ 2008 ਵਿੱਚ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਕਾਮਨਵੈਲਥ ਦੇ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਲਟੀਨੋ ਸਟੇਟ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਚੁਣੇ ਗਏ ਅਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਟੇਟ ਤੇ ਵੱਡੇ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸਿਵ ਰਿਫਾਰਮਸ ਅੱਗੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ 1.5 ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸਿਵ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਫੰਡਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਬਿੱਲ ਪਾਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਅਤੇ ਮਜ਼ਲੂਮਾਂ ਦੇ ਹੱਕਾਂ ਲਈ ਲੜਾਈ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੁਣ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਜੀ ਮੈਸੇਚੂਸੈਟਸ ਦੇ ਗਵਰਨਰ ਲਈ ਲੜ ਰਹੇ ਹਨ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਉਹ ਉਪਰਾਲਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਲੜਾਈ ਜਾਰੀ ਰਹੇ ਅਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਹੋਰ ਚੰਗੇ ਭਵਿੱਖ ਲਈ ਕੰਮ ਕਰ ਸਕਣ ਅੱਜ ਸਿੱਖ ਸਾਰੀ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਸਦੇ ਹਨ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੇ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਚੈਲੰਜ ਨੇ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਹੇਟ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਮਸ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਕੂਲਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੁਲੀ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਹਮਲਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਕਿ ਓਕ ਕ੍ਰੀਕ ਅਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੀ ਬੇਦ ਵੀ ਵੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਜੇ ਕਰ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਗਵਰਨਰ ਦੀ ਰੇਸ ਜਿੱਤਣ ਉਹ ਸਕੂਲਾਂ ਦੇ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਸਿਲੇਬਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਨੂੰ ਸ਼ਾਮਿਲ ਕਰਨ ਇਸ ਨਾਲ ਸਿੱਖਾਂ ਦੀ ਖੂਬਸੂਰਤੀ ਬਾਰੇ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਮੀਦ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਅਕਾਲ ਪੁਰਖ ਸੈਨੇਟਰ ਸੋਨੀਆ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੀ ਕੈਂਪੇਨ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਫਲਤਾ ਬਖਸ਼ਾਂ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ The Sikhs of New England are delighted to welcome Senator Sonia Chang Diaz. She is the daughter of a social worker and America's first Latino astronaut. She was elected the Commonwealth's first Latina senator in 2008 and quickly became a driving force behind many of the state's biggest progressive reforms, including landmark $1.5 billion progressive education funding reforms, criminal justice reform, LGBTQ plus equal rights and police reform and accountability. Now, Senator Sonia Chang Diaz is running running for governor of Massachusetts to continue the fight for bold, transformational change and build the future we all want our kids to grow up in. The Six are a unique community and we have called Massachusetts our home since 1799. We are the adherents of the fifth largest world religion, Sikhism which is a revolutionary faith that gave equal rights to women and men in the 15th century. Guru Nanak, Sikhism's founder, created an egalitarian society that saw social justice and human rights as its most prized values. Because of the revolutionary faith, revolutionary nature of our faith and our willingness to fight oppression in all of its forms, the Sikh community has been persecuted in history in our homeland. Not surprisingly, many Sikhs have made America their home because of this great nation's promise of liberty and justice. Today, Sikhs in their pursuit of the American dream are making great contributions in all walks of life across the Commonwealth and the broader United States. Sikhs have also opened up their gurdwaras as shelters and food distribution centers for our fellow Americans during times of crisis. You can count on us whenever there is a need. Like all communities, Sikhs too have their challenges. As a conspicuous minority, the Sikhs have seen a sharp increase in hate crimes over the past few years. In one survey, it was found that 67% of Sikh children have experienced bullying and harassment, and 13% of the Sikh kids face bullying daily. In the not so recent past, our places of worship have been targeted by white supremacists. Senator Sonia Chang Diaz, We are very optimistic about the future because education can be used as a tool to fight this kind of bigotry. It is our hope that when you become the governor of the Commonwealth, 
Your Board of Education will incorporate lesson plans about the six in the state's social studies curriculum, much like Judaism, Islam, and Christianity find a place in its curricula. We are excited to see a progressive candidate like you running for office, and we wish you the very best. Wahegruji ka khalsa, Wahegruji ki fateh. Wahegruji ka khalsa, Wahegruji ki fateh. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure and honor to welcome Senator Sonia Chang Diaz to the Gurdwara Sahib, and I would request the Senator to come and address the congregation. Wahegruji ka khalsa, Wahegruji ki fateh. Good afternoon, everyone. Gord Frate? Did I get it right? All right. Um, thank you for that very warm welcome uh, and the kind introduction. It is really a humbling honor for me to be here with you today. Um, it is also wonderful to be joined in this visit uh, by members of the Westboro PD. Um, I want to thank you all for welcoming me to join you in this just beautiful community um, to learn from each of you. I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and what brought me here, and also the Massachusetts that I believe that we can build together. As you heard, I'm Sonia Chang Diaz, and I am a mom. I am a former public school teacher. I'm a state senator and a grassroots organizer, and I'm the daughter of an immigrant. And as I look around, I see that every day in our state, it is getting harder and harder for families to live and raise their kids here. Housing costs are getting higher and higher. We have some of the worst traffic congestion in the nation, some of the fastest growing student debt load. Healthcare costs, childcare costs are going up and up. And of course, the consequences of climate change are just barreling down on us. And the truth is, my friends, leaders on Beacon Hill have been telling working families to wait for too long for real, meaningful change on these problems. Now, I'll tell you frankly, I am tired of waiting for government to live up to our hopes and our families' needs, and that is why I am running for governor of Massachusetts. The fire that I bring to this race comes from my past, and it's so great to see this morning uh, the way that you prioritize teaching about your history to your young people coming up, because it is such an important ingredient um, to the moral work and the social justice work that we all do, and you can't do it without that understanding of your past. I grew up moving between two different worlds always, as the uh, multiracial child of a single mom growing up in a wealthy white community. My dad was an immigrant to the United States from Costa Rica, and he came with 50 bucks in his pocket, but a big dream. And with the help of teachers and lunch ladies and librarians along the way, he made it not only to college, but as you heard, to space. And he became NASA's first Latino astronaut. My mom, as you also heard, is a social worker. And she is a woman of profound faith. And while my dad pursued his lifelong dream of becoming an astronaut out in Texas, my mom raised me and my sister here in Massachusetts. Now, one thing uh, that you gotta know about my mom is that she knows how to make every penny count. And we saw her stretch our grocery budget growing up with things like powdered milk and soup nights. But even though she struggled to make do out of a little, she still somehow always found enough to give at church and to others. And she took that grit and that grace and she cobbled together what privilege she had and she moved us to Newton, where she knew that I would get a first class education. Now in high school, it was clear to me that our family was different. I'm sure many of you young people have had a similar experience uh, in your schools. Uh, the kids around me mostly had cars, took trips to Europe. We did not have those things in our family. But I got the same great education as the other kids in my town. And for that, I am always grateful. But I also know that my story is an exception, and I never forgot that either. 
So when I graduated from college, I wanted to pay that debt forward. And knowing full well what an incredible difference my education would make in my life, I decided to become a teacher in one of the poorest and the least funded school districts here in Massachusetts, the city of Lynn. Every day in Lynn, I came face to face with the way that the gap between have and have not communities impacted my children, my kids. There was never enough paper in the supply closet. Uh, kids would be coming to school in the dead of winter without winter coats. Low expectations surrounded them in many cases, and there were just too many kids on each teacher's roster. And I saw how state and local government leaders went above and beyond to care for the children of wealthy families, like the ones that I had grown up with, but then somehow lost that sense of urgency when it came to children struggling on the margins. State government, what I saw, was simply choosing not to see them, choosing to abandon my kids in Lynn. So with my dad, uh, the answer to a problem was always uh, another question. What are you going to do about it? And so I decided to become an organizer. I got out there, and I took action, and I organized for the things that I believe would create change for my students, right? Voting rights, progressive change, more women in office. And still, change wasn't happening. And so in 2008, I decided to run for office myself. And to the surprise of all the naysayers, I won. And I became the first Latina and the first Asian American to serve in the Massachusetts State Senate. And for the past 13 years, I have been fighting on the front lines for bold transformational change. And as a state senator, I have found myself once again having that experience of moving between worlds, uh, just like I had done as a kid. But now, as a legislator, it is going from fancy high-powered boardrooms in the morning to housing development community rooms at night. And in those travels back and forth, I discovered something important about our culture in our state government and on Beacon Hill. It lacks a critical ingredient. And that ingredient is urgency. In Massachusetts, we like to consider ourselves the best than the brightest, right? The most progressive. But the truth is, our systems are broken. And they are failing hundreds of thousands of families. And that's why today across Massachusetts, we have students who will spend years earning their degree. Like so many of your young, hardworking students that I met um, just a few minutes ago, they spend years working hard to earn their degree, but then they cannot afford to pay off this crushing student debt that they have mounted. We've got grandmas and grandpas who are choosing between paying for their insulin and choosing to keep the, the heat on. We've got moms and dads like me, probably many of you, who look at our babies and we wonder if they're going to inherit a planet that will sustain them. We've got working people who have been busting their behinds for years and never seen a raise relative to inflation. And we've got black and brown kids uh, and their parents who worry that their next encounter with the police could be their last. Our systems are broken. And like any other political system in the world, we're not immune here in Massachusetts. It will never change unless we stand up and demand more. And that is why I am running, because we, have, we must not be afraid to demand more than incremental fixes and demand more than nibbling around the edges. I have learned from my time in office that we absolutely can win big for our families and our communities if we organize together. And I know that this is a lesson you know in your bones here at the Gudwara. I have seen it firsthand, and that's why I say it with such confidence. And I'll give you an example of how I know this and what I've seen. Just a couple of years ago in Massachusetts, uh, we passed a landmark law uh, that you heard a little bit about from my young uh, introduction givers, the Student Opportunity Act. This law provides $1.5 billion in new progressive funding for all of our children's schools each year once it is fully phased in, making it a game changer for our education system and for closing gaps created by economic and racial inequality. And when the bill became law, it was backed by 
a broad coalition and it saw unanimous support in the legislature and it looked from the outside like that had always been inevitable. But that's not how it started. It started five years earlier in 2014. At that time, state leaders loved to tout Massachusetts' reputation as an education leader. But in fact, we had among the worst opportunity and achievement gaps in the nation, literally bottoming out the 50 states, or maybe like one line above uh, the bottom, when it came to the gap between wealthy and poor and white kids and kids of color. That same year, I was appointed as the sole person of color on a 21-person commission tasked with updating our state's aging education funding formula. And I saw an opportunity in this commission to make good on the changes that my students in Lynn needed and to uphold the promise that we make in our Massachusetts state constitution to deliver a quality education to all of our children. Now, I will tell you honestly, the power brokers on Beacon Hill had a different idea. Uh, they wanted to get in and get out with the least expensive recommendations possible. They did not want to touch the issue of inequality and achievement gaps at all. And so almost everybody on that commission assumed that we would just make a couple modest recommendations and we would call it a win and we would go home. So after months of meetings and hours and hours worth of testimony and presentations and polite conversation, they said that the side issue of opportunity gaps needed further study. In the State House, that's the polite way that we use to describe kicking the can down the road. So the commission was about to adjourn and issue its final report. And I knew that if I did not speak up, we would be pretending like we did not see a whole another generation's worth of kids sitting in schools that were set up for failure. But I could not pretend because I moved between those worlds every day and because it was my students who were being set up for failure. And so I decided that I couldn't, I wouldn't let that happen on my watch. And so knowing that it was gonna cost me dearly in my relationships on Beacon Hill, I spoke up. I refused to let the commission adjourn without looking at issues of equity. I organized the members, convincing a majority of them to take up the issue, and we got a new report. It was a better, more honest, more ambitious report. And it was a report that became the foundation of new legislation. But the work was far from over. For the next four years, we had to drag Governor Baker and some state house leaders to the altar. But from Boston to the South Shore, to Lemonster, to East Hampton, we built a movement to get it done and we made it impossible for Beacon Hill to ignore working families and their kids. And so in 2019, Governor Baker gritted his teeth and he signed that bill into law at one of the most under-resourced schools in my district. And it is a law that is now gonna pump 1.5 billion, with a B, in new dollars into our school systems, redefining the way that our state funds education and accomplishes the work of equity for generations to come. That, my friends, is what can happen when we elect people who are willing to challenge the status quo, even when it is uncomfortable and not politically convenient. The problem is, these kinds of wins are still the exception rather than the rule. And I don't know about you guys, but I am tired of it being the exception. We have to make audacity the rule. And my friends, I'm here to tell you that we do not have to accept the world as it is presented to us. I have seen real systemic transformational change happen before in our Commonwealth, and that is how I know that we can provide a quality, affordable education to every one of our kids from birth into adulthood, including universal early education and care and debt-free public college. We can pass a Green New Deal in our state to win the fight against climate change and create tens of thousands of new, good-paying jobs. We can close the racial wealth divide, rebuild the middle class, make it so that our young people's economic fortunes look better and not worse than their parents. That world is within reach. 
Don't let anybody, in politics or otherwise, tell you that it isn't. Bold transformational change is possible. We just need to stand together. We got to see each other's fights as our own. And we got to stop putting people in charge who are more concerned with holding on to power rather than doing something with it. So my friends, there is no mystical perfect time, no magical leader who will wave a magic wand and fix it all. But together, the power is in our hands, and we are indeed the ones that we have been waiting for. When it comes to winning real change for our state, the reality is we are not limited in Massachusetts by natural resources or technology or public opinion. Our biggest obstacle is a lack of courage and urgency from our elected leaders. I did not get into this race because I thought it was going to be easy uh, or because I saw a good career opportunity. I got into it because I have stood on the front lines with families across our state like yours my whole life. And I know the urgency of this moment that we're living in and I know the future that we can build together. And I'm excited to build this future with all of you and partner with you and your incredible community on the road ahead. So thank you again so much for welcoming me into this beautiful house of worship, into your community. I'm so grateful to you. Uh, and I hope that we will go forward in this work together. Thank you so much. साथ संग जी वाहेगुरु जी का खालसा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह सेनेटर चेंग डियाज फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द ब्रॉडर डायस्परा इन द स्टेट ऑफ मैसेच्यूसेट्स एंड इन ब्रॉडर न्यू इंग्लैंड वी आर ऑनर्ड दैट यू आर विद अस टुडे थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग यू नो आई वी नो यू आर वेरी बिजी यू हैव अ बिग कैंपेन अहेड ऑफ यू and the fact that you actually made time to actually come and visit speaks volumes of your passion and how you care about the immigrant community such as ours racial justice you talked about racial justice you talked about immigration reform climate change education these are all the topics that our community cares about a lot should not be any surprise that we are here we call this country our home where we love this country it has provided us with tremendous opportunities but more can be done and we're looking forward to actually working very closely with you and your staff to support you the best way we can moving forward as the first asian american and latina senator i would also like to call out that you're also paving the way for a community like ours to think about getting involved in social service this is something that doesn't come to first generation you know members very easily but you are showing the path that this is possible and we can be part of the change and the reform of this great state so on behalf of the entire community we wanted to thank you and really appreciate you being with us and spending some time with us today would like to have the kids i would like to introduce our uh, you know the police uh, staff that is with us today but before i do that we have a bunch of kids as you can see they're lining up and they're very energetic and anxious to actually present you with a small gift on behalf of the broader community here in the westboro gurdwara sahib and new england six study circle as well as all the six that actually call massachusetts home
Saad Sangaji, uh, today we are very honored that you know Police Chief Lori, Deputy Chief Minardi, and Lieutenant Daniels are also here with us today. Could we request you to please stand up? Saad Sangaji, we've been in this community for the last about five years or so, and I can say without a doubt that the amount of support that we have had from Chief Lori and the rest of the police department here in Westboro has been absolutely amazing. The level of patience that they've shown with us as we got settled into the, this house of worship when we moved from Milford to uh, the uh, Westboro Gurdwara Saab, the level of support that we receive from them. We get to meet with them on a regular basis. Even today, we had a, such a tremendous conversation in terms of how we can collaborate moving forward. It's been an absolute honor to be part of this tremendous community and having such a tremendous support from them. Any time, day or night, when we've asked for any sort of help from the police department, they have been there for us. That's the kind of support that doesn't come every day and it should not be taken for granted. It's something that reflects about the, about the values and the support that we get from the community, from the police department. The, the fire chief could not be with us today. I wanna actually acknowledge that as well, that the t all the way from the town staff, the, the fire department, the police department, we've had a tremendous amount of support. And we couldn't thank you enough for all the effort that you have gone through to actually welcome us into this community, as well as supporting us in terms of getting settled and becoming a part of this broader community here in Westboro. So thank you so much on behalf of the entire congregation here. And we continue to look to actually keep working with you moving forward. So thank you so much. Bole Soneha. Wahiguruji ka khalsa, Sri Wahiguruji ki fateh.